Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. With CMU 1.13.2 now released for free to everybody in the public, this is my complete setup guide which is going to show you how you can get all of your games running in the best possible performance on this Wii U emulator. Before we get started, there are a few things you are going to need to know in order to have the best possible compatibility on this emulator. First of all, you are going to need to have C++ Redistributable 2017 installed on your computer. You're going to need to make sure that your GPU supports at least OpenGL 4.1, if it supports 4.6 it will use that instead, and you are going to need to make sure that every single driver on your system is up to date. If you need a simple and easy way to install all drivers on your system and make sure they are up to date, you can simply download a program called Driver Booster 5 from Steam. This application is 100% free and it is by far the best way to make sure that all drivers on your system are up to date. If you have any trouble with downloading or making sure that your system is compatible with this emulator, do not hesitate to leave a comment down below and I will help you as soon as possible. Alternatively, you can join my Discord and ask any questions you could possibly have over there. You'll find a link to this Discord down in the description of this video. Now that all that information is out of the way, let's get this setup guide started. The first thing you want to do is download CMU, CMU Hook, your graphics packs and shader caches for whichever game you're going to be playing. You'll find a link down in the description for different shader caches. I'll also show you how to transfer them from your old CMU build. So first of all, you're going to right click on CMU and using 7-zip you're going to extract it to CMU 1.13.2. Once this is done, drag it to the center of your window. Next, open this folder and all of your files are here. Next, you want to drag and drop the CMU hook zip file into this folder. Once again, right click this, come to 7-zip and instead of selecting extract to, you're going to select extract here. This will extract your CMU hook files to your CMU folder. Once you have these two DLLs, you can simply move your CMU hook zip file back to your desktop. I'm just going to delete mine as I no longer need it. The next thing we're going to do is get all of the graphics packs for all of your games on CMU Emulator. Open this graphics pack folder, drag and drop this graphics pack zip file right here, right click it, once again come to 7-zip, and now you're going to select once again extract here. Now this process can take quite a large amount of time depending on how fast or slow your CPU is, so please do be patient. Once all of these files have successfully extracted, you now have all of the graphics packs for all of the compatible games on CMU Emulator, you can simply delete this zip file right here. Now that we've got all of our graphics packs, let's come back to this folder and we are now going to put our shader cache into our proper folder. All you want to do is open your shader cache folder, come to transferable and drag and drop your bin file for your selected games shader cache into this folder. As I said, you can find different links to different shader caches in the description of this video. They will be linked on the shader cache reddit. The next thing we're going to do is change some compatibility settings for CMU. Simply right click on it, come to properties, and then come to this compatibility tab. You want to select run this program as administrator, disable full screen optimizations and click this button here. You need to make sure to click this top option right here to use these settings for scaling problems and also tick this box for high DPI scaling override. I would highly advise that you leave this at application though some people do see better performance when using system enhanced. Once you have made these changes, simply click this OK button, click the apply button and you are now done with CMU compatibility settings. Next, we're going to launch CMU emulator itself and download the shared fonts that come with CMU Hawk. Down at the bottom of the CMU window, you can see this download now button right here. If you do not have this, you are going to need to re-extract your CMU hook files into your CMU directory. Once you have all of these downloaded, we now need to add your game directory in order to set up our games list. Down in the description of this video, you will find my guide to show you how to download your games. All you want to do is come to options, general settings, and in this game paths section right here, you want to click this add button right here. Once you have this done, you want to navigate over to wherever your games are stored, mine are right here. You do not want to come into this folder and individually select your games, instead you want to select the actual directory where they are all stored. Simply select it like so, click select folder, and you should see that your game path will be saved in this window here. 
Simply click X, you should see it updating your games list and all of your games should now appear in this window. As you can see, my versions and DLCs are not currently added due to the fact that all of my DLCs are all in the previous version of CMU that I have used. Many games on CMU emulator will not even work, for example Breath of the Wild won't work unless you have it fully updated. In the next section of this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can transfer across files from your previous CMU version in order to get them to work in this one. First of all, I'm going to open up both of my CMU folders, both my previous one for 1.13.1 and my new one for 1.13.2. There are many files you are going to need to transfer over from your previous version, so let's just get stuck in and show you exactly what you need. Now, usually we would transfer our MLC01 folder, but since we have a new feature in 1.13.2, we no longer need to do this. The files you want to transfer are your settings.bin, your settings.xml, your cprom and otp.bin in case you use CMU's online mode. You also want to transfer over any of the files that are in controller profiles. You want to select your shader cache files, and these are all of the files we're going to be transferring. Once you have these highlighted like so, simply right click, select copy and then paste them across into your new CMU directory. Once these files have been transferred over, simply click replace just in case there are any files that you need to replace and you are now done with this transferring of files. As you can see inside of our controller profiles window, we have any controller profiles that we need for CMU emulator, however I'll also be showing you how to set up and map your inputs. Now, as I previously said, in 1.13.2 we have a new way of retrieving our files from the MLC01 folder. In order to do this, I'm going to need to launch CMU 1.13.2. Now that it's launched, I want to come to Options, General Settings, and as you can see, we have this new setting, MLC Path. All you want to do is click this box right here, and navigate to wherever your CMU folder is. This is my old CMU folder right here, all I want to do is select MLC01, and as you can see, this MLC Path is now being detected as my MLC folder. The next thing we want to do is click this X button and once CMU has refreshed you can see that it is now detecting all of my updates, DLCs and it will also be detecting all of my game saves and any other settings I need. If you are new to CMU emulator you can simply select any other folder you create yourself as your MLC path, put it on any other drive you want and that will make sure that you are going to be able to update CMU emulator very easily in the future. Please, however, make sure that you do not delete this MLC01 folder, as if you do that, you will be deleting all of your updates, DLCs, and game saves. You can, however, delete all of the other files. I'm just going to keep mine, as I use this folder right here as my testing folder for work in progress builds of CMU Emulator. We are now basically done with transferring and setting up all of our MLC paths, so let's just close my old CMU folder and concentrate on our new one. Let's now launch CMU Emulator once again and go over how to set up our inputs for use in this emulator. To set up your inputs, simply come to Options, Input Settings, and as you can see, the controller profiles that I previously transferred over are being fully detected. However, if you are new to CMU, this will not show up for you. You are going to simply click X, I'm going to come to my controller profiles window, and I'm going to delete these profiles to simulate what it's like to set up your controller profiles for the first time. As you will see, when I delete my folders while CMU is already open, these profiles are going to be deleted. In order to set it up properly, I'm going to close CMU and then reopen it. Once CMU has reopened, once again you come to Options, Input Settings, and as you can see, we are going to need to select an emulated controller. You want to select the Wii U gamepad. You then want to select whichever controller API you're using. My controller is X input. Select your controller from this drop down window and then you're going to want to map your controller inputs. I'm just going to set up my controller inputs very quickly right now. If you're having any trouble, you can simply look up a layout diagram of the Wii U gamepad and map your controller to exactly that. This blow mic button, I generally set this to the F key on my keyboard and I leave this show screen as blank. Now, once you have set up all of these different settings, you're going to want to assign your controller a profile name. I'm just going to call mine controller1 and once I have my name inputted, you want to click this save button right here. You should now see that your controller1 profile is being detected in this profile drop down window. For many games on CMU emulator, if you want to use a second controller, you want to come to controller2, 
set the emulated controller to the Wii U Pro controller this time, and then as before, set up your inputs for your secondary controller. Make sure that you are selecting a different controller than the very first one you have already set up. I'm simply going to come back to my controller 1 window, load this profile, and as you can see, it is indeed saved. You can also change the rumble on your gamepads by simply adjusting this slider. I generally leave my rumble amount at a very low amount of around 10 to 15%. Let's leave it at 12 for now, and we are now basically done with our controller setup. I'm now going to show you how you can turn on graphics packs for use with CMU Emulator itself. Simply come to Options, Graphics Packs, and you will see this old graphics packs drop down window right here. In order to turn on any graphics packs you wish to use for this emulator, simply scroll down and as you can see I'm using a 1080p resolution pack for Breath of the Wild. Scrolling down this window a little further, you also want to turn on FPS++, you also want to turn on the LWZX Crash Workaround, and if you're an NVIDIA GPU user, you want to turn on these two glitch fixing graphics packs right here. All the GPU users need to turn on this Kakariko Square Torches fix, and if you are an AMD GPU user, for now at least, you're going to want to turn on these two AMD graphics packs right here. Since I am an NVIDIA GPU user, I don't need to use them. Additionally, if you want slightly better performance in combat in Breath of the Wild, you can turn on this No Depth of Field graphics pack right here. Once you're happy with all of your graphics pack selections, you can simply click this X button and we are now done with graphics pack selection. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to set up your optimized game profile for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the most difficult to run game on this emulator. All you want to do is scroll down this list, find Breath of the Wild, right click on it and you want to open this game profile option right here. Once this game profile window opens, you are going to want to change the majority of your settings to what you see on screen right now. The two most important options are this accurate shader mall equals min setting. Setting this to equals min will give you a small performance boost and for Nvidia GPU users will also save you about 3 or 4 gigabytes of RAM utilization. You are going to also want to change your CPU mode to a supported one that you can see on screen right now that will match your own CPU's core or thread amount. If you are not sure about which setting to use, do not be afraid to leave a comment down below and I will respond as soon as possible. Once finished, click File, Save and you are now done with your game profile. If you are looking for any other settings for any other games, you can find them on a special chat channel in my own Discord server, a link for that will be down in the description. Next, let's take a look at our general settings for CMU Emulator and make sure they are all correct. In this window, there's not much we need to change, you can however enable this full screen menu bar, however, I do not like to use it, so I just leave it disabled. You can also change your language to any one of these supported language, I just leave mine at default. Coming across the, the Graphics tab, you are going to want to change the majority of your settings to what you see on screen now. Set Upscale Filter to Bicubic, Full Screen Scaling to Keep Aspect Ratio, you're also going to want to have Use Separable Shaders turned on, Nvidia GPU users are going to want to disable their pre-compiled shader hash, AMD users definitely should not turn this setting on, and every single CMU user should turn Full Sync at GX2 Draw Done on if their main intention is to play The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Many other games crash with this setting on, so turn it off if you are experiencing any crashing. Coming to audio, I'm going to leave my settings at X Audio 2 since I get the best performance when using this. If you experience any crackling or distorted sound, simply raise the latency to a higher millisecond value. However, in my experience, my best settings are when set to 48 milliseconds, so that's what I'm going to leave mine as. I set my device to primary sound driver, channels to stereo, and I'm going to leave my volume at 100%. Coming across to online mode, this is where you can turn on the online settings and enable your own profile, I'm just going to leave mine at disabled for now. Coming back to our graphics tab just for one minute, we want to come back to our upscale filter and there are some settings outside of this area we need to change. As well as using a bicubic, you also need to come to debug and make sure you are using a bilinear downscaling. Once you have these two options, these will give you the best possible graphical output in CMU Emulator in all of your games. Since we're now in debug, you also want to use a custom timer of QPC, and coming back to debug, you also want to set an MM timer accuracy of 1 millisecond. Once you have these settings changed, you have now the best optimized settings for CMU. Coming to the CPU tab, you are also going to want to change some settings. You want to make sure that your CPU mode in this window is set to single core recompiler. 
We are using single core recompiler due to the fact that 99% of games on CMU emulator are going to require you to use single core recompiler. The only games in my experience that can take advantage of triple core recompiler are Breath of the Wild, Wind Waker and you can also expect to see slightly better performance in Minecraft for Wii U. Coming back to our CPU tab, you also want to make sure your timer is set to host based timer and affinity, you generally want to leave this at all logical cores. If by any chance you are having a very bad performance in CMU emulator and your CPU should be outputting a much better performance, you should definitely consider deselecting the final four cores or threads on your CPU. All you want to do is deselect these final four cores, leave the rest enabled and then once again test your performance. For the majority of users though, you are going to be able to use all of these different cores for CMU emulator. Simply click this OK button to apply any of your core affinity settings. Next, you want to come to Experimental and make sure that you are using this Use RDTSC setting. This setting is quite important for using accurate timers in CMU emulator itself. Once you have all of the previously shown settings applied and fully configured, you are now basically done with your setup of CMU emulator itself. Now I'm going to close CMU and show you some optimized graphics settings for CMU emulator. For NVIDIA GPU users, simply right click on your desktop, select NVIDIA control panel and once your control panel opens, you want to come to this top setting right here. You want to make sure that you are using your advanced 3D image settings. You can either click take me there or you can come to this Manage 3D Settings window right here. Next, come to Program Settings, and we are now going to make sure that we are actually using our most up-to-date version of CMU itself. As you can see, CMU will appear in this drop-down window, but if you have many other EXEs, it may not apply to your latest build. Simply click this Add button, then you want to click this Browse button, then navigate to wherever your latest CMU folder is. Mine is right here on my desktop, I simply want to select my cmu.exe, highlight it and then click this open button right here. We're now going to go down through all of these settings and I'm going to show you the most optimized settings you can use in your NVIDIA control panel for the best performance. You want to set anisotropic filtering to off, scroll down a little further and you want to set maximum pre-rendered frames to 1. For OpenGL rendering GPU you want to set this to your actual GPU and not auto select. For power management mode, you want to use prefer maximum performance. Scroll down further and these two settings should be turned to exactly these if you turned off anisotropic filtering. Scrolling down a little further, you want to turn threaded optimization on. And finally, you also want to turn triple buffering on. Now since I already had these settings applied, I'm not going to have an apply button so I'm just going to change this to off. Then back to on and I am now going to click this apply button since I have now changed the setting. You are now using the most optimized settings for NVIDIA GPUs and CMU emulator. Let's now move across to the red team and take a look at some optimized settings for AMD GPU users. All you want to do is copy exactly what you see on screen right now and once you have changed everything, save your settings and you should now be set up for the best possible performance with AMD GPUs on CMU emulator. Now that we're done with GPUs, let's take a look at some performance changes we can make to boost the performance of your CPU. These changes can especially help people using laptops. Right click on your Windows icon and then come to Power Options. Once the power window opens up, you want to come to this side window and click Additional Power Settings. Inside of this window, you are most likely only going to have three options, Balanced, High Performance and Power Saver. This driver booster power plan is just a clone of my high performance power plan. Once you have high performance selected, click Change Plan Settings and once in this window, click Change Advanced Power Settings. You want to scroll down until you see Processor Power Management and then you want to make sure that both your minimum and maximum processor state are set to 100%. Once both of these are set to 100%, click OK and then you can close these power setting windows. You are now done with changing power settings, let's move on to some other optimizations. CMU emulator itself is very RAM intensive and especially on NVIDIA GPUs you are going to need to make this change if you only have 8GB of RAM. Come to your control panel, select category and then come to system and security. Then select system, in this left hand window select advanced system settings, then in this window select performance, click this settings button right here and then in this window click advanced. This virtual memory number is what we are going to be changing. 
As you can see, I currently have mine set to 3500 megabytes. However, if you only have 8 gigabytes of RAM, you are going to want to change this number to 5500. This is basically going to assign a partition on your SSD or hard drive to use this allocated storage as RAM overflow in the event that all of the RAM on your system gets used. All you need to do is set it to 5500, click OK and if it asks you to restart your system at this point in time, you're going to need to restart your system after hitting the apply button. Once you have made all of these changes I have shown in this video so far and believe me, every single one of them are very important for maximum performance in CMU Emulator, we are now ready to launch our games and start playing and seeing what our performance is like. All you want to do to launch your games in CMU is scroll down through your games list to the game you want to launch, let's just launch The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. As you can see, the shader cache that I added to CMU earlier in this video is now being loaded. You can also see that when we come to the CPU tab, mode, we are now also using Triple Core Recompiler, as that is the recompiler I set this game to use in my game profile. Please be aware that the very first time you load a shader cache in CMU Emulator, it can take a very long time to compile this shader cache. On my own personal system, it takes me anywhere between around 5 and 8 minutes to compile this cache, so please do be patient. For any NVIDIA GPU users who are using the pre-compiled ignored setting I previously showed, you can follow my additional guide which will show you how to back up your shader caches inside of your GL cache shader in order to make sure that you have the best possible performance and load times within CMU Emulator itself. You can find that guide linked down in the description of this video. So, now that we're loaded into the main menu of our game, you can see that we are indeed updated with our latest DLC and update, and since we have successfully updated our using CMUHook and FPS++, we are indeed running at 60 frames per second. Let's now select one of our game saves, get into gameplay, and see exactly what our performance is like in one of the most demanding areas of the game, Hyrule Castle Town Runes. So now that we're loaded in game, let's just wait for our performance to stabilize and we should indeed see that in this most demanding area in the game, we are going to be locked to 59.5 or 60 frames per second, basically meaning that we are getting a locked 60 frames per second in Breath of the Wild. As I've already said, if there are any other settings for any other games you wish to know on CMU Emulator, do let me know down in the comments section of this video. Either that, or join my Discord and ask any questions you could possibly have over there. We are a very nice and friendly community, so do not be afraid to ask any questions there. Hopefully everything I've shown you in this guide is going to give you the best possible performance in any of your games on this Wii U emulator. Once again guys, cheers for checking out the video, as always, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't. If you want to help to support my YouTube channel, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description of this video, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.